Uh, next section is a paper session um, on advanced cyber infrastructure for enabling convergence research and education. Uh, the first paper here is going to be presented by Alex Michael, who is a PhD student in, in our lab. Hello, uh, today I'm going to be talking about streamlined HPC environments with CVFS and CyberJust Compute. Uh, this was work I did with uh, an undergrad student who has now gone to MIT, and then Anand and Shawin, who I'm sure you all know by now. Uh, so <clears throat> it's been talked about a couple times today, but in case you didn't know, CyberJust Compute is a geospatial middleware designed to democratize HPC access for solving cross-cutting computationally complex uh, problems. And the, the core concept here is we want to make it easy for people who have never used the terminal, they don't know what SSH means, we're trying to provide a nice, simple point-and-click interface. We're trying to provide a streamlined way for model developers to get models into compute because we know there are lots of like hydrologists or climatologists who are like experts in their software, but maybe they don't know how to port it to different HPC environments. <clears throat> Very high level, how does it work? Uh, we have end users who are accessing everything through that interface you just saw through our Jupyter hubs. And we have model developers, they're just submitting things to GitHub. And we have this core server that when a user tries to run a model, it pulls the code from GitHub and it kind of talks to the HPC and tells it how to do it. Um, but of course, just telling it how to do it, there's some complexity there. How do we actually run it on HPC? Uh, so model contributors define a manifest with instructions on how to do that and that in uh, includes a container, so I know Container is not a uh, very common jargon within the GIS community, but it's kind of like a lightweight copy of your computing environment. It's like a Conda environment I'm sure most of you are familiar with, but like even more so, like it includes the operating system, kind of everything there. Uh, but unfortunately, with our uh, Jupyter Hubs, we've actually been ditching containers. Not, not entirely, we're still running in a container for uh, orchestration reasons. But um, originally they all did run all the software, everything you needed to run your code was in the container. So on CyberJust X, the iGUIDE platform, and CJW, which is CyberJust Jupyter for water. Uh, and again, they're great for isolation, making sure that like when you run your code, it doesn't affect someone else and orchestration, but they're not ideal for software distribution. There are a lot of problems here. Uh, they're only designed to get so big, so we actually ran into an issue uh, with CyberJS X, which has been running for what, like five years now? So a couple years ago we ran into an issue where we just like maxed out the layer size and it was like 22 gigabytes and it was just running into a bunch of issues. Um, we often pull entire containers to run a subset of the software, so our container had like eight different environments for different niches, but of course if you're running your job, you're not using the other seven, you're just using one of them. Uh, and there's this combinatorial explosion in combinations of software and versions. You know, you might need 3.1, another person might need 3.2, and then, of course, when you add a second software in, and it just grows rapidly. <laughs> so our solution one for our Jupyter hubs, everything was in containers. As I just said, there are these issues with large images. We have to recreate the environment every release. Uh, and for Docker Swarm, which we were using at the time, uh, we can't keep old versions, we just have to have one container. Uh, Kubernetes, which I know the iGUIDE platform uses, it's less of an issue, but there's still other issues uh, that we talked about. So uh, 2021 fall, we moved to uh, a different solution where we moved a lot of our software into a network file system, which solved a lot of our problems, but not all of them. Uh, so here we just have Network file system, you've probably all interacted with. It's like when you log into any computer on campus, you probably have your files regardless of the computer. It's just all networked together. Uh, the issues there that we ran into, it's not fault tolerant. So we actually had one time where the NFS server went down and the Jupyter Hub did not, and nobody can do anything. Uh, it's not super scalable. So for example, we have three different uh, Jupyter Hubs that we're trying to support and just one server handling all those requests. And it's also hard to use outside of the network. So uh, if Bagide Platform is running on Anvil and CJW is running on Jetstream and then ours is running on our own network, where do you put the server? How do you juggle all the network traffic? So what we've moved to uh, 
last fall uh, is easy build on CVFS, what we call the solution. We solved a lot of those just by moving everything from basically to a new file system, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. But the nice thing here is we solved those fault tolerance and scalability issues. But OK, now that we've gotten everything out of the container, we can't just use that same container for compute. There is no container. Uh, and there are still some issues um, with OS architectures, because some software, it does matter. But hopefully, that won't come up too much. Uh, if you're interested in this type of work, we actually uh, just had a paper accepted to computation concurrency practice and experience, so it should come out in the next week or two. But um, trying to move into more of the compute stuff. Uh, but before I do that, what is CVFS? It's the CERN Virtual Machine File System. It's just a scalable and reliable system for distributing software created for the Large Hadron Collider and CERN. And instead of like one central server doing all the work, you have this stratum zero, which is kind of like the leader. And then you have these uh, read-only copies, these stratum ones that you can put anywhere. So for example, we have uh, our stratum zero and uh, read-only copy at Illinois, but we also have another copy at, on Anvil, another copy on uh, Jetstream. And then you could also set up a proxy network, so we're able to scale it as much as we need to. Uh, so for our Jupyter hubs, we ended up with a system like this. As I said, we have that uh, central one in Illinois, and then CyberGIS X and CJW both use it. And actually, I think last week, Noah and Rajesh uh, moved to the iGUIDE platform to use CVMFS. So now we're all using this. Uh, but as I said, how do we? Compute still relies on containers. How do we get all that software back into CyberGIS Compute? Because it used to be we could tell people, oh, yeah, if your notebook runs on one of our Jupyter hubs, all you have to do is turn that notebook into a Python script, and it'll run. It's the exact same thing. Um, and we can still, in theory, do that, like if we do a Conda export and recreate. But anyone who's used Conda, I'm sure you've run into this issue where oh yeah, I exported and then I tried to recreate it and it just didn't work or there was some weird issue or you know, uh, the build types are different because operating system issues. Um, so we could, in theory, do like an export and just recreate it within a container. Uh, but ideally, we just ditch containers with compute as well. Not completely, like I said, we still want it for like isolation issues, but not having it as a software distribution mechanism. So the big idea here is how do we provide the same environment that's on our Jupyter hubs with CyberGIS Compute now that we're using CVMFS. Uh, so our core server, the, the basics are here. We have the API with some authentication, things going to a job queue. There's a maintainer that just makes sure that like your job didn't fail, it just manages that for you. Our SSH connectors, which basically just talk to the HPC, then of course the HPC. So what do we need to change here? Uh, the API and the authentication stays the exact same. We're just talking to the Jupyter Hub. It knows nothing about what CVMFS is. But we still need to set up a connector that can speak CVMFS, kind of a new language here. And then, of course, we need to make sure that our HPCs can actually use CVMFS. Uh, so the nice thing here is there is a sing CVMFS package, which is essentially like a wrapper around singularity that allows us to do it. Um, and this has given us a prototype that works, but <laughs> we're still running into some issues here. And um, when we filed an issue on GitHub, the response we got was, wow, you're probably taking this further than anybody. So there's still some bugs to work out. But we do have uh, some working prototypes. Uh, so now that we can get CMFS into the container, essentially we've just loaded like your, your files but that doesn't mean that you're actually going to use your files when they run. So, uh, so there was uh, some other work to speak CVMFS to add that translation. So we had to create these scripts that could load everything and make sure that you have this coherent software environment in the same way that you do on your Jupyter Hub. But of course, the thing that matters to everyone here is, OK, what does this mean for me? Well. It means, hopefully, once we get all these little glitches figured out, you don't need to know what containers are. Because I know a couple people here have come to me and said, hey, I have this model or I have this project that I really want to do. Here are the, here's the GitHub, because you know we're all trying to make sure we have well-documented open source code. And then I say, oh, OK, well, do you have a container? And you're like, what? 
which is a common uh, thing that happens. We understand that not everyone has like the IT background. Uh, so he, the idea here, and this is a screenshot from our prototype, uh, it's just a basic PySAL accessibility, is instead of having to worry about a container, which you have to build and maintain because you know, things get out of date, you would just specify, I want to use the CyberJSX, Python 3, 0 0.9 container, it's really just the kernel, and you're just using our CMFS connector. So there's still a little bit more work to do here, but we do have the basics figured out where it, now if you run a notebook on CyberJSX, on iGUIDE, on CJW, you can do the exact same thing through compute and you never have to worry about the complexity of what container is. You just basically need to have a Python script or an R script or whatever you need to run. Uh, so some takeaways. We have a prototype CMFS connector, which allows us to use the exact same software uh, on CyberJS Compute as in our JupyterHub instances. So you can test it all out on the Jupyter Hubs, and then you can scale it all with compute without having to learn the terminal. Uh, and then we have a proof of concept job that's able to utilize. Um, if there's anyone here who's interested in getting their stuff working, let us know. But of course, there's still some future work, as I said. There's some stability issues. Uh, essentially, sometimes, the, the, the code goes faster than the software loads, almost like you're uh, on a train throwing the tracks down in front of you and sometimes the train goes off the tracks. We have to do obviously some more exp extensive testing. The stuff we've tried is mostly just single-threaded Python. Uh, we're also looking at scaling and deploying on the cloud. Uh, Furkan Beg is somewhere around. He's, yeah, he's running that, so we're hoping to get uh, even more complex computing environments, even more computational power there. And then, uh, the iGUI Jupyter Hub was using our CVFS repo, but they just switched over, so they didn't have to email me every time they made a small change. Uh, so we just got to add that in there, but that should be relatively straightforward. All right, uh, are there any questions?